Look at that. Looks like it's from the Christmas Carol. Remember when that thing came alive? And here is Father Andrew. That's Hello, right. Father. It is a pleasure to see you. I'm not recording, I'm only live streaming. Live streaming. But there's a number of people in Australia that would love to say hello to you. And so, okay. do you know anybody in Australia? Yeah, my sister Barbara's there and my sister, well, no, she's the only one left because the rest of them are here. I have to say, I loved your sermon, Father. It was <laughs> beautiful. You. And I think you're right. St. Paul said it all. In yeah. those two. Husbands love your wives? So she's the one who told me that. Barbara. Oh, really? Yeah. Barbara. I don't know if you're watching, Barbara, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, she gets the credit. Well, it's the second time I've quoted her in a sermon. Roman Ray, Margaret Mary Smith, Guinea Squeaks, Xavier B. They're all saying hello, Father. Okay. All, I don't know if you know any of them. Yeah. Okay. My nieces are in there. Okay, there we go. Hello, Maggie. <laughs> Anything you want to tell them? I wish you were here. Definitely. They're definitely here in spirit. Yeah, so... This is my second wedding in three months because everyone's coming to America. So the message is come to America. <laughs> <laughs> the mask mandates are going away. The yeah. COVID restrictions Life are going is good away. here. Now, Father Cyprian has finally repealed the mask mandate in Silver City, hasn't he? <laughs> I mean, it took a long time, but he finally capitulated. But somebody might speak up and say something silly. He might put the muzzle back on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Father, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you. I remember you from my seminary yeah, days. Yeah, we were in the seminary When together. we were both younger. In the audio department. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you were in the that audio department. The audio. So did, did you take some of your audio skills with you to uh, the note? The brother, uh, brother Roman, thankfully, is taking care of those things. Okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> Let's see here. People are signing the guest book. Okay, John, let's take some Just because you know Guys, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello. We miss you. We have 13 people viewing us on the live stream, and we only have six likes, which is very unfortunate. Okay, well, I'm going to turn on some video effects, okay? Guys, the, the black and white effect makes this place look even more elegant. My lovely wife, Bridget Shestock. Bridget, would you like to say hello? Hi. <laughs> Bridget, let me show you this. We have 13 viewers right now and eight likes. And we are live for seven minutes now. Everyone, this is Katie Lester, and she was one of the lovely alto voices that you heard during today's high mass. So, hi, Katie. Hello. How long have you been singing in the choir now? This about four years. Four years. For that. Nine? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Good job today. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Anytime you see me coming, just know that you're being live streamed. I'm already okay? incriminated from before. Yes, so. I know. Don't worry. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Ray. <laughs> We've got a lot of people tuning in, and they're really excited to be here with us in spirit. And you are? Uh, Joe. Joe Elliott. Joe Elliott. Okay. Yeah. Never right. knows who I am. No, no, is he? Does he sound? Nah, he's, he's American. He sounds American. The Trumpley. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. This fight. Raph, Raph, get happened. over here. We've before. got a fight breaking out over here. Can you be our I bouncer? Know we'll win. I'm only five foot six, so I'm not. I know, but you look like you're built. You could take anybody. I could maybe sit on them and that might work. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, the scola that you heard today was led and conducted by Raph. Right here. Hello. Round of applause, everybody. Now, Raph learned everything about music from Dr. Andrew Childs in well, St. Mary's. 75%. 75? 75%. Who, who taught you the other 25? Tell him. Um, Talent. That was like Syracuse days, mainly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Syracuse stays. Is this streaming in Australia? Michelle Ray says, the Hi, the Joe, you have a lovely wife. Oh, I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about Joe? How, Who is this what person? About, the most lovely thing that Michelle I Michelle Ray <laughs> and Margaret Mary Smith says, Hi, Katie. Wow. Must be talking to you. Oh, oh. I just that? spoke with Katie. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's okay. This is my wife. Why is that? She's so always saying you can laugh out a little bit. <laughs> I like... Well, I like the real close shots, so yeah. you can see okay. people all sweat. The details, yeah. All the details, yeah. all the, all the, all the all gruesome details, yeah. <laughs> Don't get too close. I'm still it's trying to scary. figure out which camera to look at. There's three different cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Cross-eyed. Yeah. Why, why? Uh, over here? Take a look. Yes. Do you know anybody in Australia? Uh, not, uh, John's, John's wife. Okay. we got someone from St. Louis, Missouri, England, Germany. Australia, you are just live yeah. all around this globe. Nice, wow. So a toast, guys. Toast. Can you all say good night, Mike? Good night, Mike. Good night, Mike. <laughs> well done. <laughs> you sounded just like Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> A horrible face plant. Hi there. We have a bunch of people watching. Ten people. Oh, Germany. Germany, St. Louis, Australia, England. So, a few different countries. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, they're from Little Rock, yeah. Arkansas. And this is Bridget. Hello. Bridget, where are you from? Originally? Yeah. From Boone Mill, Missouri. Oh, where's everywhere. the food? Where's the food? We're so hungry. I've never seen you this angry, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Not too far. And, and why are you all crashing the party today? relatives, so we, we can. Of course. Yes, yeah, apparently. See, we, uh, okay, well, I, I want to see you do the Old Fashioned and the Manhattan and the Long Island Iced Tea a little bit later, okay? Yes, we'll get on. We'll definitely get on. Okay. This is Aunt Whitney. Aunt Whitney. Aunt Whitney. Aunt Whitney. Aunt Whitney. Okay. Hi, Aunt Whitney. <laughs> hey. And you are? I'm Nana. Dana? Nana. Nana. That's what my mom goes by now. Grandma. Nana. Yes. Aunt's grandmother. Okay, yes. Wonderful. Well, it's good to meet you both. Yes. Hey, people. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Where is it? I didn't know you had a baby. <laughs> just picked him up. <laughs> oh, you just picked him up? Oh, he's not yours. Okay. You can have him for a while. That's all right. <laughs> Are you going to finish that piece of chocolate? Yes. Oh, okay, darn. I'm just scrounging for food and, and drink around here. Hi there, you have a friendly face. <laughs> yeah. What's your name? I am Jerry. Oh. Name neighbor. Steve. Okay. Dad. All right. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> okay. That's my 
first drink. Okay. All right. Well, I'm counting. I'm, sh okay? I'm sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> so this only counts for a half. <laughs> it only counts. I'm <laughs> A pleasure to meet you both. Oh, oh I'm Ann Bronner, a uh, friend of the knee neighbors. Lisa Spencer. Lisa another Spencer. Spencer and Ann Bronner. It's a pleasure to meet both of you. <laughs> we have someone watching from England, Germany, St. Louis, Australia, all across the globe. Can you believe Fantastic. that? Fantastic. Yeah. This is absolutely Cheers. amazing. It is. It's incredi incredible mass and wedding and an incredible reception. Keep How do people call, stay here? Keep calm. Carry on. And pray the rosary. And pray the rosary. <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I, think, I think what it is, it's really what happened in Canada. I think that's actually what triggered it. That's what triggered it. It's like they said, wait a minute, what if that happens here? And it's And now they have been blessed by God with little Anastasia, the love and joy of their life. Look at that. Is that face not straight out of heaven? Am I coming tomorrow? Yeah. Just here, Mr. Bunny. Bunny. There, there's part Hello, two. Mr. Zap. Mrs. Zap. You won't believe this. What? There's a girl from Poland. Her name is Bunny Bunny. No, her last name is Bonnie. I didn't even recognize you with that beard. Oh yeah, it's undercover. I'm actually part of the CIA now. Don't tell anybody. Don't publish this. Shannon, I'm coming to you next. Just, just say yes, ma'am. Just say yes, yes ma'am, ma to your wife. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma <laughs> so Enjoy every minute of today. It will go by very quickly. And just live in the moment and treasure every moment. Treasure every moment. And pray your rosary tonight. And pray it tonight. Pray your rosary tonight. Okay. That's uh, all. <laughs> What's that? All 15 decades. All 15 decades? Yeah. <laughs> all 15 decades? Yeah. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Wow. Wow. I'm, you don't pray 15 decades How a do day. You know? Maybe I, I do. My halo says it all. <laughs> Look, five is hard enough. Oh, there she is. Did you see that? <laughs> Guys. Rewind the video because you might have only caught a brief glimpse of her face. <laughs> Louise, people on the live stream are asking to see your face. Okay, she's toasty. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Australia. Hi, Australia. They're saying, let's see, let's read some of the comments. Should we read some of the comments? Yes, we would love Okay. Congratulations to Teresa and John, Stefan and Ann. Best wishes, Mr. Cameraman. We say the rosary upside down in Australia. We also say the rosary in England. Okay, love and congratulations to two wonderful couples. Great live stream, it's so entertaining. Hi, Louise Awerkamp, be my pen pal. Hey, Michael, thanks, Sebastian, for filling in. Hello, Philo and Cece. Hi, hi. Oh, oh, there, oh, is that you two? Uh, let's see, that one, that last one? That's from Margaret Mary Smith. Hi, Maggie. Hey, Maggie. <laughs> You got cousins and family all over the place. What do you want to say to her? Uh, I just want to say to all the cousins, we wish you were here to celebrate it with us. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, do something very soon. 
everybody. Yeah, with everyone. That would be amazing. And I just want to say um, hello to our lovely family in Australia. We really miss you and we really wish you were here. It's been the best thing ever to be here and I'm really glad that you made us come over here to spend some time with our cousins. It's been absolutely amazing. <laughs> Beautiful. Very good. You're good at speaking off the cuff like that. Well done. <laughs> Susan Erbacher, she says, love to Philomena and C Cecilia from all of the Ur Erbachers. Hi, great, all the Erbachers. Great to see you. Yeah, it's awesome. great being here. Really you, nice being here. Do you have a message as well? Well, I'm, uh, yeah, wish everyone could be here. It's uh, far away, but it was well worth the trip. It's How long are you here for? We leave on Monday. Oh. Yeah, it's not too long, but... How long have you been here? Two weeks. Just two weeks? Yeah. Yeah, the amount of tears we've shed today has been amazing. <laughs> just now we had that many. <laughs> it's been so special to be here. Really? Yeah. Why has it been so special to be here? Oh, because uh, Stefan and Tirais mean so much to us. And we've spent our whole... We've grown up with them. We know them Mina. so well. And it's just strange to sit and see you. It's wonderful to see them. They've met some, some people and they're so happy. So is everybody in Australia um, just like you all? Because we keep getting these Australians that are so nice and <laughs> kind and like they're just Mina. selfless. And we're like, wait, this is so weird. I didn't know people were like this. Well, we think the Americans are the same way. <laughs> really? Very, very welcoming. Very Would you please point out a few? Because I've never met one before. <laughs> Well, well, I'm oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Pretty darn good. Yep, pretty darn good. Okay, keep your language plain. <laughs> this is live. Tell us something about yourself. I am from St. Mary's. Okay. I am a friend of John Zapp, and that's why I'm here. Awesome. And what's your best hobby? My best, I ride bikes. Oh. Mountain bikes, yeah. What kind of bikes? Mountain bikes, yeah. Like, like the, with the engine in them and everything? No, no, no. Even oh, like a real bike, you got a pedal. Yes, like a pedal bike. It's not an e-bike, is it's it? It's not. No. Okay. It's no. the real thing. Yes, yeah, the real thing. The kind of bike we had in the '80s. The kind of thing that most people think would be a horror to ride. So. <laughs> well, no wonder you're in shape. That's what I'm doing wrong. Hey, good to meet you. What yeah. was your name? Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Take care, Thomas. Yep. Thank you. Smoothly played, Mr. Mason. Oh, there you are. I was looking Why are you for you. <laughs> I was trying to get up here. This reception hall. Looks like it's something out of a movie. And I, I feel like I'm in the movie. Yeah, you're making a movie too. Built yeah, by, built by the Amish. Man. But you know why this is such a great movie? It's because there's not a lot of movies where there's a bunch of clerics, brothers, priests. Cleric, you said? Or a... Cleric. <laughs> cleric. Clerics. <laughs> But would you like to introduce who you are? Uh, I'm not father. I'm Brother Rene, actually. Brother Rene. And how long have you been a brother? Uh, 19 years. Wow. So, how old were you when you became a brother? Uh, that's a good question. I joined the seminary when I was 19, and that was in 1999. And uh, when did you first think you had a calling? Uh, how exact day? Yeah, well, just how old? Well, actually, were you? when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be a priest. I never knew about the brothers at the time, but when I was at the seminary, it kind of became clear. I don't like talking to in front of people or in front of cameras. <laughs> and I didn't want to have to give sermons. Are you sermons. dropping a hand, brother? <laughs> uh -oh. so that, that's like a major part of these poor priest lives, you know. Yeah, it is. And so the re religious life was there. It was such a beautiful life. It's a great way to back up the priests, you know, and give them all the support they need to get reach souls. I mean, I know how you hate being on camera, but yeah. you're doing a really good job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Y'all enjoy your drinks back home. Sit back, relax. We're about ready to start uh, the introductions here shortly. Okay, we will do. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye.
Camino Grigio. You got some serious upper arm strength to be holding both those boys. That's impressive. These boys are giving me a big glare. What's wrong? Don't you like me? No? I'm gonna come over there and tickle you until you cry. Are you not ticklish? Those are some pretty impressive bow ties. Look at that. Do you like bow ties? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say goodbye. Can you guys wave? Bye. Oh, good. Thank you. If you ever come to St. Vincent de Paul, these are gonna be two of the faces you're gonna see standing outside. And they are not the bouncers, but they are. Sometimes we have to be. Sometimes they have to be. They throw yes. out the hoodlums. I don't prefer it. But these guys have been with tradition and with St. Vincent's for a long time. How long have you been coming to St. Vincent's? 25 years, maybe oh more, gosh. maybe more, let me think. I have to do some math. So you've seen a lot, haven't you? I have, I have. You, yes. know, what all, you know where all the bodies are buried? I know where they are, <laughs> and I can't tell you. Now, compared to the last 25 years, we're living through some really good times right now. Well, actually, I would say they're good times as far as how many people we have coming there. Yeah. When I was there, it's kind of, uh, you know, when I first started, you didn't have the number of people we do now, so. Exactly. Yeah. Dan, how long have you been coming to St. Vincent's? Uh, about 20 years, 25 20 years. years. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to stand up. Oh. And look at that. They are the Tomax. We're invited to all the weddings down here. They are. Yep, they, 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 is this yeah. live again? This is live. live. Hello, St. hello. Vincent's. Australia. So if you come to any party in the Kansas City area, you're going to see these two faces. <laughs> they are so well. Oh, my God. I was, is this the live uh, Australia what? thing? What? Yes. Oh my. Oh my. Is, it, is it warm down there? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, what's the temperature in Australia? We've got people watching from England and Germany and St. Louis, Missouri as well. <laughs> so, worldwide. Everybody we, we know what the temperature is in St. Louis. And Good night, mate. Good night, mate. Good night. Good. You can do better. You can go. You keep going too close. I, people are asking. They want to see you closer. Hey, Ozzy, say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now those are real Ozzy. See, yeah, but, but they're starting to, to say good day because they've been here so long. Good, good day. Oh, did you say that? Good day. Okay. Good day. We're going to be taken over by Ozzy. It's here. like G comma D A E. Okay, g'day. Allie is super excited. She's like, really excited. Lots of exclamation marks. Good on you, Allie. There you go. Hi, Mrs. Massey. Good, Good, Good day. Congratulations, Reno. Congratulations, so Mr. Wright. Congratulations. Oh, your daughter was beautiful. Your son was handsome, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful wedding. Awesome. I'll see you soon. Bunch of studs. <laughs> Thank you all. We're excited to see all of you and meet all of you. And he feels like he's here watching. Congratulations, Congratulations. to Stefan's dad. It was a beautiful ceremony. It, it really beautiful was. Beautiful wedding. Beautiful. Uh, Mr. Renault, um, we are very impressed with your son. He's been here a short time, but he's made a very big impact on all of us here in Kansas City. And it feels like he's been here a lot longer than he really has. So well done, you've done a really good job and we're so excited for Stefan and for Anne. It's a beautiful couple. Congratulations. 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 And Anne, Anne teaches our daughter. What's that? Anne teaches our daughter oh, at, she in, does. at St. Vincent's. Okay, so what grade? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Very happy that she's a teacher. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So Stefan married Anne, and Anne is a teacher at St. Vincent de Paul Academy. Sixth grade.
I'm Joseph Zapp, and I'm the brother of the groom, the younger brother of the groom, and I love food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm Nella Banner, and I don't know John too well, uh -huh. but I know that he's funny. But so we're getting married in April. No way. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Where did you two meet? In Poland. In what? In Poland? Yes. I've been to Poland. Really? Krakow. Okay, so we were there for yeah. a few days, but okay. she's from Warsaw. Oh, Warsaw. Yes. Okay, congratulations to you both. Thank you. April 19th. Yeah. Awesome. And who are you? Paul Zapp. Um, Paul John, Zapp. John's brother, and then I also went to school with Stefan in Australia. All right. Yep, yep. That was back in 2007, 2008. So. And, and what's an interesting tidbit of information about you that not a lot of people know? Riding motorcycles. Riding motorcycles. That? You know that's going to kill you someday. Hey, you got to die somehow. I'm Heidi Dvorak. Um, I met Trez when I moved down to Kansas for college. It was about the same time that she moved here um, to America. And we connected through our love of music, the violin. Ah, you played the violin. Were you playing today? I was not. Oh, okay. I was up walking the aisle with the rest of the bridesmaids. Oh, okay. yep. so are you pretty good at the violin? Uh, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're humble too. <laughs> well. <laughs> Joe Peterson. Joe Peterson? That's correct. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Joe. I'm only getting well, close because I'm otherwise quiet. people might not hear you. I know. I, I'm a friend of John. I've known him for quite a few years now. All right. And he honored me with asking for me to be his best man. What's your favorite thing to do? I don't do much for hobbies anymore. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. And your dad. Dad is watching from overseas, and he is so proud of you, and he is so excited for you both. Uh, thank you. What would you like to say to him right now? Uh, we love him, and thank you so much for making this all possible from afar and thank for all his support. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you, and we wish you were here with us. Xavier says, congrats, Teresa and John. Love you. Congrats to the couple. A lot of people just saying Thank that you, they Xavier. are so excited for you. 
Martina Zapp. I'm John's youngest sister, and um, happy to have Tres in our family now. Awesome. Look at that. Hey, Pauline. Hey. If you're watching, yeah, thanks for letting him come. <laughs> He's probably sleeping. But, no, well, yeah, yeah, thanks for letting him come. Hey, pup. We love you. Uh, thank you for all your support and everything that you've done. Um, uh, <clears throat> hope you enjoyed the live stream. Uh, Michael's really been um, up and about, which I'm really happy to, to see. and He's doing a really great job. Hope you feel like you've been part of the action. Um, to everyone else, Uncle Alan, my own child, happy wedding anniversary. Zaves, um, you know, Mare, my woman, Auntie Shell, all of my other friends, Camilla, Thought of Pat, all of that. So, yeah, look Roman here. writes in, Papa says he loves you very much. Thanks, Pat. Love you. This is this is the party end of the table, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really definitely. It is. is. Non-alcoholic non part of the table. He, is it really? he doesn't want to eat his salad because he says he doesn't want to be a rabbit. Oh. <laughs> Let's see what you me. got. <laughs> hey, listen, buddy. You need to eat your food. It's a <laughs> hey, Jim. I know. If you're watching, thanks for letting me come. Cause he's been a godsend and. Great mate, so Aww. hey kids, eat your veggies, the sun's your growth if you don't. <laughs> well, why don't you practice what you preach, buddy? You need to eat. Oh, look at mm. Let's get a close mm. up shot. So good. So good. Mm. Mm -mm. Eat your veggies, kids. Uh, Xavier says, ha ha ha, eat up, Jess. Jace? Yeah. Yeah. They, they want to see more shots of you eating. <laughs> Wait till the meat comes, I'll yeah. <laughs> And then this guy, all he's eating tonight is. <laughs> Blue Moon. Now, would you like to explain to us, Jerome, why you're only drinking beer today? What? This would be the perfect food fight table. It would. It would. And I had to pass it up, so I ate my salad. I'm done. If you only drink alcohol and you only eat cake, do you know how large you're going to be when you get older? <laughs> I dream of it, yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay, and then would you like to introduce us to your sister who's rolling her eyes at the camera? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you thought I didn't catch that. The My camera head. the camera didn't catch camera you rolling your off. eyes, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll leave you alone. Bye-bye, Gemma. Look at these guys. Two Steves. Two Steves. Two of the many Steves. Where's yeah. Steve Neighbor at? Steve Daly and Steve Patterson. Hi. The two most important Steves in the United States of America. Now, are you live streaming this, Mike? I'm live streaming. Father's hearing confession uh, over there in a little while, Mike. Because my we, daughter said they already saw Cindy in it, so. Are you serious? Hi, girls. We've been live streaming for 82 minutes and four wow. seconds. We have only 17 people watching, which I'm kind of disappointed by. But we have 1,700, 14, you said? 1,700, yeah, 1,700 people. <laughs> 14 likes out of that 1700 which means Boy, a lot of Mike. people are just not I happy. Mean, I mean. <laughs> so I need you to come up with some oh, more content. Be happy. be happy, be happy. Yeah, don't worry, be happy. Don't worry either. When your life has got some troubles. That's it, there you go. Don't worry, you'll there make you. it double. Yeah. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> Steve doesn't know that Ditto. song. No. I'm trying to think who sang that, though. <laughs> who, who sang that? There was a Frank Sinatra. I don't know. That was a famous 80s song. Okay. Yeah. It can be Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Steve's been listening to Gregorian chant for so long, he can't think of a single modern pop song right now <laughs> to save his life. Steve, you need to get with the times. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's what I call a close-up. That's a close-up. That's yeah, good. You get my rent. Are they patriotic eyes, red, white, and blue? Actually, people are saying on the chat that they want to see a closer shot. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that commercial where the little, the little kid gets his parents' mommy's phone and starts running all through the house, being chased by this her mom, and she's going da 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 da, -da on the stairs and everything else. I don't know, Steve. I don't watch TV. Well, I saw I, somebody told me about that, and I was, and I was at. And I that's was, a good save. That's a good. That's a good save. That's, a good save. Save. Yeah. that's one of your lines. No, I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Steve, tell us about that new 92-inch screen TV you just bought. Oh, it works great. Congratulations. Good on you, mate. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Well, no, that's Father Andrew. <laughs>
Father, I'm just making sure you got all the hairs around that tonsure. Okay, Luke, uh, someone was saying, let's see. They said, please interview Luke Ray oh, nice. from Xavier B. Oh, oh wow. Xavier, he's got me. <laughs> uh, who's Xavier? So Xavier Brill is uh, one of Stefan and my good friends from Australia. Um, and uh, yeah, he's just one of the Australian, uh, one of our Australian friends. All right, Xavier, I'm, I'm fulfilling your request. Luke, is there any advice or counsel that you would like to give to Xavier? He's really struggling, I'm sure. Uh, I think uh, we've sort of given up on Xavier a little bit. So oh, no! Uh, yeah. Have you given up on him too, Father? I don't know, but from the pictures that I've seen about him, he needs prayer. <laughs> Xavier, they put up some uh, <laughs> pictures of you on the bulletin board asking for prayers at the Benedictine Monastery. I don't know why, I just know they're there. Okay, so we're all praying today for Xavier. Uh, God bless uh, you, Zabes. Okay, and uh, they say, tell Luke I said hello, Anna Marie Smith, and so does his godchild. Oh, uh, Alex. Margaret Mary Smith says, hello, Luke. <laughs> Hi, Margie. How are you? <laughs> it's good to hear your voice. Did you? Uh, uh, you I heard have a her voice? Yeah. You're, you're, he's hearing your I voice. I have a message for Margie. So, Margie, you need to stop doing this virtually and get here to the United States oh. so you can be here with us. <laughs> so, you're saying that to Margaret Mary? Yeah, Margaret Mary. Hello again, Margie. <laughs> and Bernie as well. We wish you were here as well. Yeah. And, and Roman says, hi, Luke, please check your telegrams for three late telegrams. <laughs> Who says the word telegrams? <laughs> I I, I've, that... I've checked it. I have checked it. They've been sent off to the MC. So I'm hoping they come up. I've done all I can, Uncle Russ. <laughs> Margaret Mary says, I have the best uncle. Who's the it's uncle? True. That's him. Name. What? Yeah, that's only one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you the best uncle? Yeah. Oh, so you have a fault, pride. Yeah, <laughs> but it's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good to see you both. I'll let Love you get it. back to your meal. Bye, Dad. Okay, Thank bye, -bye. You, Dad. If there anything you'd like to tell the Australians? I tell them that we really enjoy Steph Stefan as a teacher. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, how long was he a teacher? He was just a teacher for us this year. Oh, he okay. teaches seventh grade math. Is he done? or is he He's going to come back and teach the math, but he's going to give up his boys' recess with, with oh. the boys. So. Okay. Yes. Yes. Isn't he an amazing What's, guy? He is. He's teaching my daughter math. And it took her a little while to get used to the concept of Zed, but once she got that, we were okay. Now, he's not teaching that modern math, is he? Oh, I think so. Uh, what is it called? Common Core or something? No, we do not have Common Core. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so, so he's a real traditionalist. Very much so. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you all for your time tonight. You guys, this is Peter, Peter Maney. And I am, I'm always getting on Peter because he's not dressing liturgically. And like, uh, Lou is not a liturgical color. What was that? What's up with that? I was trying to be neutral for the wedding. Oh. Yes. Uh, it's beautiful. I was trying not to take away from the bride and the groom's day. I will say, your beard you... is always manicured so perfectly. How much time do you spend in front of the mirror every day? You can't do what you're saying. I think you should see this guy's beard. <laughs> I don't have a beard. I just, just everybody out there to know, uh, Mike just got out of the witness protection program, so he was allowed to shave his beard. <laughs> Is someone drinking that? No, you can. Okay. Do you like it? Oh, I would love some. Don't try this at home. Or Guys, you can. <laughs> don't worry. That's only my first drink. I know he looks young. He is above 21, though, so he's allowed to I drink. <laughs> and this is Mr. and Mrs. Patterson. They are probably just as... They're, like, on equal terms with the Ray family. Like, I don't know who's going to get to heaven first. The Pattersons or the Ray family. I don't know. But they're both probably us. really good. Probably us. Is it probably us? Probably. <laughs> He's like, probably us. Now, you got to watch out for that pride, Steve. Seriously. That'll get you every time. No, it's not pride. It's just knowledge. Oh. He's and humble and proud of it. He's humble and proud of it. Where did you two meet? At church. At church. No. Where else would you think? Uh, Way. I was I thinking mean, like at a karaoke bar. <laughs> no. Mike is a previous friend of ours. <laughs> How dare 
you? How dare you? Hey, Steve, could you hold this while I take this guy outside? Can we get out this door? Let me point the camera this way. Okay, now that we're done, I'm trying the, uh, the tough love angle okay. tonight. All right. And because I love you, Mike, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> Have you ever punched someone in the face? Never. Never? Not even I, your own brother? Never. I gave them a fruit punch. That was it. Oh. No punch in the face. So, so Steve Neighbor was talking about memories, build memories. What is a very important memory from your childhood? Definitely a thing. Oh, really? And I, it's funny, I was always a big uh, saying of my parents, uh, like Father Anthony said today, the family that prays together stays together. So true. So you prayed together? Yes. Like every day? Every day. We said the family rosary. Not a day went by, we didn't. Now I say two, one for you and one for my family. <laughs> it's not working. It's not working, Peter. I, would, I, I, would, I have St. Monica as my patron, right? She prayed for every saint. I go, so there's help with you too, Mike. You're not supposed to pick female saints if you're a guy. <laughs> Don't you have all the tables you should be going to? <laughs> my, look at the time. Better get going, buddy. Hey, hey guys. Hey, you're righteous. Okay. Look, Peter, are we still friends? We're still guys, friends. See? I want you to see that we're still friends. Yeah. Brothers in Christ. And besides, even if we weren't, God says, love your enemies. As thyself. No, he doesn't say that. <laughs> you need to read your scripture, buddy. Okay. Get liturgical. Like, I like the black, though. The black is good. Oh, thanks. I'm trying to blend in. You are. You wanted to be in the background. You did a exactly. great job of it. Okay. Other, other than the big arrow on the back that says, see me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to get out of here. Steve, thank you for your time. Thank you, I know Michael. I make you nervous. You did very good. Okay. No, I'm never ner nervous around you. Oh, good. No, God I'm, bless you. God bless Take you, care. too. And if there's any more uh, champagne left on the table, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring it to you. Okay. Loving the live stream, a lot of interaction. Oh, Come here, yeah. take a look real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this out here. And we'll just let you see. They have to start scrolling up.
Um, how do I get, where, where do I get my plane? It's at your table, Sydney. Oh, are you serious? I hope I was invited from like crashing the party. I'll be back, okay? Thank you. So it's very good. Is hey, it? No, Dip and I thought that you should just record all of the conversation because we're very, Set it in, up right we're, there. We're, it's exciting around here. Is it? Yeah. So. Is this a good table? The best. The Bronners. Oh my gosh, the Dysters are my favorite, and the Weishars. You picked a good table. It was, it was just selected. We had to sit here. Why? Why are there two empty seats? Nobody wanted to sit next to me. Clearly. That was supposed two, two to be Father Trumer. Apparently, when you found out you were sitting here. It was supposed to be Father Trumer. <laughs> yes. He had it. Oh no. He probably <laughs> saw the sign yeah. and went. <laughs> Where, did, did Father Trumer come? I no. think he came in, saw who was at the table, and then like Mark said, Jeff, are you don't sit call. Don't do that to me, seriously. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't come. No, he was supposed to be here. I don't think he's here. His name is on the no, table. His name's list. on the table list. That's all. Would you would you call him and just right, tell no. him that he was supposed to sit next to Michael Shestog? No, I'm not doing that. Okay, thanks. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. Jeff. Sorry. And you owed me a favor too. I know, probably more than one. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Tom. Yeah. You're looking good. Hey. What happened to your facial hair? You're wondering why I've lost 20 pounds. Straight out of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, How long did it take to grow that? Three months. Three months? It would take me three years. Four months, maybe. That's pretty impressive. A little bit. Well done. What's your name? Pete. Mays. What? Mays. Pete Mays. Pete Mays. And this guy is Justin Ingham. Oh, no. Guys. Hi. Justin used to be on my boys camps when I was a seminarian he would come to the camp he was so funny now you've got seven children now yes have you kept your sense of humor or are you no longer funny no daddy what are you doing no longer what? funny Canute yes. there you go daddy. that's better that's his eldest son Canute daddy hey Canute you want to say hi to the world hi world hi there <laughs> I love your bow tie I like you <laughs> He is just That's like where you. it went. Yes, exactly. All right. Let's you were see. pretty funny, too. I was funny? Yeah. Not as funny as you. Yeah. You were hysterical. Wait, what are you doing? What are you doing that for? Um, everybody is watching around the world right now. This is live stream. So people in Australia are watching this. So everybody in Australia, on the other side of the world, is watching right now? This right now in real time. What? What? <laughs> See, that's terrible. Nobody wants to be on TV. And could I, I'm gonna get a little bit of salad, if you don't mind. What is your name? Uh, Fatima. Oh, Fatima. Fatima. Yeah. Oh, well, in the Catholic world, we always yeah. say Fatima, yeah. but we're probably mispronouncing it. Yeah. Uh, it could be either way. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I say Fatima sometimes. Oh, do you? Yeah. It's a beautiful name. Yeah, thank you. Have you been there? Um, no, I have not. Are you ever gonna go? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Are you Catholic too? Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much. Bye bye. Good afternoon, Reverend Fathers Paul and Rose, Stephen and Loretta, as well as friends and relatives of Stefan, Anne, John, and Therese. It is at times like this that I wish I'd taken up Stefan's offer to attend the Better Speaking Club, but I wonder whether it would have prepared me enough for times like this, when emotions are running high and the people you are speaking about mean the world to you. I was overjoyed to see our family together again when Virginie and Luke arrived in Kansas City two weeks ago, but it was at the same time heartbreaking for me not to be there then, and especially today to share this very special once in a lifetime event in the lives of Therese and John and Anne and Stefan. What makes it even harder for me is that it's every father's honor and privilege to walk their daughter down the aisle, especially when she is his only daughter and she means the world to him. Without doubt, this was not an easy decision to take, as my heart told me to go. But in these uncertain times, I struggled to overcome my concerns about the potential consequences, and I know how disappointed Therese and Stefan are that I did not come. My children mean the world to me, 
and today marks the closure of a book full of happy memories and I wait in anticipation for the book that they will write in their turn as they embark on this wonderful journey of married life. Let me also say that it has been difficult to have been unable to share so many important events in their lives during 2021, as well as never getting a chance to meet John and Anne in person, as well as their wonderful parents, family members and friends. I'm very grateful to God and Our Lady that at least Virginie and Luke were able to make it over and share this day with you. I would like to start with a few special thank yous. Firstly, to Anne and Stefan for allowing Therese and John to share their special day, especially in the hope that Virginie and I would come. I realise just how important this day is for the bride and I hope that it has been a memorable one for you, Anne. Secondly, Virginie and I would like to thank Paul and Rose, Stephen and Loretta for their hospitality, their generosity, their patience, which has made Therese and Stefan feel so welcome, helping them with accommodation, advice and support as they embarked on the most challenging and courageous adventure in their lives. We are very indebted to you and your families for all that you have done for our children as we unfortunately live on the other side of the world and the best that we could do was to be there to share their experiences over the phone and provide some moral support and pray that they make the right decisions. We could not be happier with the spouses that Therese and Stefan have chosen and are delighted to have found another daughter in Anne and a son in John. Thirdly, to Father Andrew, to have been able to be here today to marry his niece and nephew. I know that it means a lot to them and to Virginie and I. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this fantastic venue, the English Barn, to celebrate this joyful occasion. Thank you to all of you for being here today, especially those who have traveled great distances to be with us. A special thank you to Philo and Ceci for making that last minute booking to be here with us representing the Morris family, as well as Bernie and Scott from California for representing the Bruce and Smith families. It is such a pity that COVID restrictions has made it impossible for many of Stefan and Therese's relatives and friends in Australia, in the UK and in South Africa to be with us today. I think especially of their grandparents and godparents stuck in South Africa, in the UK and in Australia. It is also at times like this that we fondly remember the loved ones and family and friends who are unfortunately no longer with us. My father, Catherine Nienaber, Grandpa Goldberg, to name but a few that come to mind. Their spirits are certainly with us and I am sure that they are smiling on this happy occasion to see their children and grandchildren marry traditional Catholic spouses. Let us please lift our glasses to absent friends. To absent friends. Well, what can I say about Therese? My little Australian, my little treasure. What a blessing it was to have a daughter like you. I was over the moon with Stefan and then Luke. But when you arrived, I realized that there is something special about a daughter and the bond that is established between father and daughter, especially when they are young and have brothers that are older than her. You stole my heart the moment I saw you and today my heart is bursting with pride and joy seeing the young woman you have become. Therese, you are looking absolutely beautiful today. John, you are a lucky man. This fairy tale wedding has its origins in October 2019, when Therese and Stefan came to the United States for the wedding of Joe and Marie Elliott. The experiences that they shared on this trip from Los Angeles to Kansas City via New Mexico brought them closer together and the age gap seemed to close and they developed a very special friendship while having a memorable holiday. 
They loved the time spent in the United States and the friends that they made. I did not know who tipped Stefan off, but he also managed to travel to Switzerland to Nick Nienaber's wedding in December 2019 and join the SSPX pilgrimage to the Holy Land in January 2020, just before COVID travel restrictions kicked in in Australia and overseas travel became impossible. At first, Therese did not say much about John, as they had only met very briefly, but she did share with me the messages that John relayed through Stefan. It was not long before Stefan gave Therese's number to John and direct contact was made. There were pictures of John's house being moved and reassembled, then short texts which became long texts, long essays, and just seemed to be getting longer and longer. This made them decide that it was probably better use of their limited time if they were to call each other. But the time difference took some getting used to. These calls unfortunately also became progressively longer and longer and Therese's absences at dinner time more frequent. And when I went to check if she had maybe fallen asleep, she would signal me that they were saying the rosary. I therefore decided to make the most of this international rosary and asked Therese if John would mind joining us for the family rosary once in a while. John was very happy to do so, and it also broke the ice and opened up the door to our getting to know the person our daughter was interested in. After many months of correspondence, we were th thrilled to hear that John had applied to come to Australia and that we would finally get a chance to meet him in person. However, Fortress Australia would not have a bar of that, and it left Therese with only one option, taking a leap of faith and going to the United States to meet John, as well as getting to know his family. Many rosaries and novenas were said in order that she would get permission to leave Australia. And finally, on Sunday, 15 August, after completing the consecration to Jesus through Mary, Therese received permission to leave and by the next Friday, she was on her way to see John. It all happened so quickly that I never really said goodbye to my little girl. My little angel had left me and was now having to beat with her own wings. John and his family made her feel very welcome, and I could sense that she had found a soulmate in John. She also seemed to be adapting well to life in the States, the adventure was just beginning, and she was loving every bit of it. I was glad that Stefan was not too far if she needed any help or advice, and I think that for Stefan it was a relief to finally have some family with him after being three months on his own. It was so comforting to see the four of them together uh, and getting on very well at their first meeting in St. Mary's after Therese's arrival. Therese felt right at home with the Zapp family, and it was good to see her get along with John's sisters and especially Mary's children. Therese, when I look back on, what, on all that has happened in your life, I realize just how blessed you and we have been. At age three, you had that terrible accident, and I thought that you would not be able to walk. But God sent us an excellent osteopath who got you walking in no time and you were able to do all the things that you wanted to do. At age 11, in those formative years, when you needed a close friend, the Morrises immigrated to Brisbane from South Africa, and you became best friends with Anyas. You could not have found a better friend, someone who shared the same values, as well as a love of music and outdoor activities. You were so in tune with each other that you told me there were times when you even knew what the other one was thinking. Agnes helped you so much, encouraging you to learn the violin and develop your love of music, not to mention some healthy competition in other aspects of life. Agnes was a very special friend, and she came into your life at the right time. It would appear that God has now sent you another special person to share the rest of your life with you. Therese loved going on girls' camps with the society nuns, and when she came back, she took on board what she had learned and tried to encourage the other girls to dress modestly. 
she realized that sewing was an important skill to learn and learned from Virginie how to sew. She's, she was always willing to try her hand at new things and started making her own bread, candle making, soap making, leather craft, drawing, to name but a few. With her passion, they all turned out really well. One thing that has impressed me with Therese is her ability to make good friends and that she was never embarrassed of her Catholic faith and to witness it and often left a favorable impression on her friends. John, I know that I am biased, but I know that you have found someone special and won my daughter, my little treasure's heart. Over the last six months, you have been able to get to know her better and appreciate her kindness, her thoughtfulness, her love of music, her sewing and nursing skills, her love of the faith, her love of children and the elderly. That said, I want to let you know that I am delighted that she has found a man like you, even if she had to travel halfway around the world to find you. Because you are a caring, humble, generous, determined, like-minded person and have brought out the best in terrors. I also know that you are a very obliging person, but you really did not need to change your nose. Rose and Paul, I thank you for having raised such a fine young man. Adding John to our family only makes our family better. John, I welcome you into our family. May I end by saying that Therese would not have turned out the way she has without the guidance of Virginie. And I thank you, my love, for the time spent nurturing and forming Therese into this complete young lady. Therese, I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, that it is a privilege and honour to be your father. You will always have a very special place in my heart. Please allow me to use this opportunity to tell Stefan how delighted I am that he has finally found that special person he has been looking for since finishing his studies. I could not be more proud of the choice he has made. Anne is the pearl of great price. Anne is beautiful, intelligent, adventurous, talented, caring, and so much more, and has won your heart. It is so reassuring to see you always happy when you are with Anne. I know that it must be difficult to be away from family, Stefan, but Anne and the Nenebe family have been such a great support to you for all these months. I cannot wait to get to know Anne in person and to thank Stephen for allowing you to marry her. Anne, I welcome you with open arms into our family. I would like to wish both Therese and John, Anne and Stefan, much happiness in the years ahead and may your love for each other grow each day. I am told that I should offer some words of wisdom to the newlyweds, and all that I can re recommend to you is to keep God and Our Lady at the heart of your married life, to pass on to your children the love of the faith, the love of the Mass, the love of the Rosary, and that trust which you have demonstrated in God and Our Lady. May I ask you all to be upstanding and offer a toast to Therese and John, Anne and Stefan. To Therese and John, to Anne and Stefan. Congratulations. And now a few words from Mr. Joe Peterson, the best man for John and Trey. John, Therese, family and friends, thank you for coming today to celebrate. Uh, I, fir I first met John at a rotary night, which uh, should, should take a little explaining. John collected all of the, uh, well, a lot of the unmarried gentlemen from St. Mary's and said, you know, instead of watching TV on Sunday night, come and pray rotary with me. 
So we all went and prayed rosary with them. And uh, other than the fact that we were there to say rosary and that we had been invited by John, um, there wasn't a lot of conflict. So I was intrigued as to why John would do something like that. So I, uh, after that, I observed him for a while and came to the conclusion that John was one of those people who cared about other people, which was interesting. So uh, I, I continued to watch him and I came to the conclusion that it wasn't just that John liked people. John tended to like people because he wanted to practice his faith, to be kind to his neighbor for the love of God, which was even more interesting. So, um, knowing him a little bit longer didn't disappoint in that regard. And uh, I served with John in the city of Gaudio. John was one of our council members, and really the driving force behind getting the town consecrated. So, John, I just wanted to say that it's, it's been a pleasure. I'm very pleased that you have met to us this incredible career in Paris, and who has the same priorities that you do, which is very important. I'd like to say, God bless you, and I hope that going forward, no matter what changes through the years, those priorities and that love which you have for each other and for God, it needs the same. I would ask that you would join me in a toast to the new Mr. and Mrs. First of all, this is from Ella Stigmund. She was his uh, best friend right before she came and I stole her. <laughs> she taught her a wedding speech. I think she got for me to think some of those to me. I want to wish you both the biggest congratulations on your exhibition book. Charles, I've never been more proud to be able to call you my best friend. always been there for me, through the thick and thin. You are the kind of person that always puts other people before you, and is always there to let in. Anyone who knows you know, would agree that you are the kindest, most caring person, and loyal friend that anyone could be honored to have. You have touched my heart in so many ways that I've never known before. So for that, I am forever grateful. And I think this one Charles can read and then it gives to me. So, I'm a bit biased, but you're the luckiest man in the world to come to us and stop talking to me. I will never forget how happy she was. Maybe she started now. That's why I love her just never quite enough away. Of course, I know that you guys are just pretty good for each other. When Charles left us earlier, I can honestly say that was the hardest thing I've been through. But knowing that she was going over to be with the man of her dreams and seeing how that was there was all worth it. So, good job, thank you. Thank you for part of my heart for making my best friend have his career on. I hope that your marriage must be keeping your marriage and my full life together. And I don't matter what my fear is that you would be easier because you have done. Couple. And I wish you both every happiness in the world and off to be. 
of Our Lady of Lourdes. Love and prayers from Uncle Roman, Auntie Michelle, and Marie Chantel. And now, can I invite the father of the bride, Mr. Nina, to give a few words. Tremendous. Uh, New York, Albuquerque, Australia, uh, Germany, or is it Switzerland now? I can't remember the name. Germany, so? Okay. All right. But anyway, I, I appreciate everybody coming. Uh, each of you are here because you've influenced these young couples in some way over the past years, whether it be a classmate, whether it be a friend, whether it be family members. Uh, teachers, religious, I see Father Andrew still here, but uh, brother, you've all influenced them in some way, and uh, I hope that you'll continue to influence them, uh, if not through your interactions, uh, certainly through your prayers, so please continue those for them. I guess as the father of the bride, I'm supposed to give a few words of wisdom. To my daughter. I've never done this before in a formal setting like this. Um, so it's, I share the, the, the comments that Mr. Ray had made. It's like, I wish I took more speech classes. Um, so bear with me, okay? Anne Marie, I, when I see you sitting up here tonight and all through the ceremony, I mean, I couldn't help but to see you as a princess, right, who has found her knight in shining armor, right, in Stefan. And it reminded me of the fairy tales that I've been reading to the children of late. Okay? And uh, just yesterday, I had the opportunity to read Snow White to the little ones. And, you know, Snow White um, had her, had her, um, opportunities, as you will, challenges in life, right? But at the end of the fairy tale, as many fairy tales end, and they lived happily ever after, it got me thinking about what did that mean for Snow White, right? And the challenges that she faced, you know, they weren't, it wasn't just a rosy, you know, upbringing. Yes, she was born into a, a, a noble family, um, but it soon turned, uh, you know, in a different direction for her. And she had to run off into the woods where she lived with some dwarfs. Okay. Kind of an exile from her family. So it was a life of hardship. So how did this happy, you know, living happily ever after, what did that mean? I mean, from the fairy tale author, 
okay? I don't know that it was the eternal happiness that we often think of as Catholics, right? Heaven. So I jumped to the conclusion that it had to be some sort of natural happiness. And I thought, well, okay, how could, how could this you know, beautiful young woman find natural happiness in the wilderness serving seven little dwarves, right? But as the fairy tale actually states in it, it says she was happy to cook, clean, and bring laughter to the house of the dwarves. Okay, now really that is the duty of a mother, right? I think Father Andrew would agree with me. If you do that, you're doing your duty of state, okay? So that is what the fairy tale tells us. But, you know, I kind of thought a little bit more about that, and there must have been something else, because she could not have served those little dwarves happily, right, without having some, something else behind that. What drove her to do that? What motivated her? What, how did she learn that? And I look back into Snow White's little past, you know, and it, it wasn't her teenage years, because that was governed by a wicked stepmother, right? Um, the dwarves didn't help because they were all busy working in a mountain somewhere and coming home and expecting a meal. So she didn't learn it from those. She learned it probably in her very early childhood, okay, when her mother, the queen, was still alive, right? And so it's those memories from early child childhood that drove her to be able to fulfill her duty of state cooking and cleaning and bringing laughter to the house of the dwarves, right? Memories are so powerful, and I would encourage the two of you, now that you start your family, to generate those memories. To illustrate, I'd like to give just one or two examples from my own childhood, okay? Memories that can last 50 years. So one example would be living at home with my parents, who are sitting over here. One of the things that we did every Lent was do the Stations of the Cross as a family. And I remember just sitting there waiting, well maybe not sitting there, I was probably grabbing the picture and so forth from my siblings, but in any case, I could not wait for my opportunity to say the Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory be, right? So I remember that situation. Also, about that same age, of being five or six years old, I was permitted to spend the night with my great-grandmother. It was the, on the premise of me going over and using one of those push mowers, you know, with the blades that cut, you know, a few, few blades at a time. Well, I remember spending the night with my great-grandmother Okay, and after I spent a few minutes in the backyard chopping the grass and probably the tomato plants and so forth, they brought me inside just before the sounds of the Angelus bell at the nearby church. That evening, I remember Aunt Catherine and Grandma uh, Landry tucking me in bed as they sat by my side saying the rosary. I'm sure I probably didn't last more than a decade or two, but they did that, and I remember it, okay? The other thing, the third example that I would give is, is again, back to my parents. I know my father started going to the St. Anne Novena when he was a child. Well, he invoked that same devotion in his family. And of course, Anne is named after St. Anne for reason. Okay. So these memories of childhood have played a, a huge part in how I've got to be where I am today and where you are. So again, those memories are very, very powerful and I would encourage you to find some of those memories, make those memories together because they will be very powerful for you and your children going forward. I guess my, my wish for you, Stefan, would be that, that um, 
that you find the happiness in this world by generating those memories and having good times together, cooking and cleaning and changing diapers and so forth, right? Those good times okay, will lead to what we really hope for you, and that is to live a happy life forevermore in heaven. And that's what it's all about. So again, congratulations on your wedding day. It's just the beginning. And we wish you all the best. So thank you very much. that he's given us um, that we really don't deserve. There's been, our, our, there's been miracle after miracle in even just getting to the States. Our Lady, San Expedite, St. Joseph, we've prayed Rosary Novena after Rosary Novena and I just finished another one today. And I think that's our fourth. So there's been a few uh, back-to-back 54-day Rosary Novenas um, to get to this point. Um, Novenas to St. Expedite and a lot of other people. I'd like to thank Father Andrew for coming in, doing our wedding today, giving such a wonderful homily. Um, it, it really made the day so much more special. I know that Father mentioned a couple of anecdotes, but this day, 27 years ago, I was the ring bearer for my godmother, Auntie Charlotte, who shares this wedding anniversary. And my mother and father were married on December the 8th, which is the feast day of the Immaculate Conception. And so there's, there's a real close link that Our Lady called herself the Immaculate Conception here at Our Lady of Woods on the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Father Mouché, if he's still here, he, he did our wedding instruction, our marriage instruction, and he, he certainly has gone out of his way to be very accommodating with the, the, the oddity of having a wedding on a, on a weekday. So thank you very much to Father Mouché for everything that he's done, and Father Seuss as well for travelling in and, and um, helping celebrate our wedding today. Next, I, I really need to thank uh, the bridesmaids and, and the groomsmen um, and uh, chosen all these bridesmaids that really been extraordinary and really gone above and beyond. Um, I chose each groomsman individually and I know a lot of people have tried to take credit for Anne and I having come together. Um, and I think you know, different people might have passed numbers around. I know I came here for John Bree's wedding and that's what I met. 
Um, that's, I, that's the first time I met him. But I really think the person who deserves almost the most credit is Nick right here. Uh, he's my best man. He's travelling from Germany. And, and we were classmates together in Australia. I never would have met him if it wasn't for Nick. And if it wasn't for Mr. and Mrs. Nina Haru who sent him Tom off to boarding school in Australia. So, Nick, thank you so much for coming <laughs> out. Yeah. And, and, and for his wife. Um, for having let him travel internationally to, to be here today. And next there's Jason. Um, I'm actually going to propose a, a quick toast here because Jason was just married on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and to be perfectly honest, I, I don't think Jason was going to make it. Um, but he's, he's one of the best friends that means to the we, we went through this whole leaving Australia to get to the States together. Jason would be around at my place for a coffee on a Sunday morning quite often. And we'd, discuss it. we'd discuss our uh, difficulties in, in getting to the States to meet the girls that we were recording at the time. So it's been an adventure and I'm very happy to share the final, or at least the, uh, the turning of a new chapter with Jason here today on the side of the Jason. Uh, and last of all, Jerome. Now, when, when I first arrived, Jerome, he, he really came along and welcomed me with open arms. He was you know, the oldest brother that was still at the moment. He was courting Bridget at the time, and, and they really went above and beyond to, to take in. And, and I had all sorts of adventures and really made us feel welcome. And I'm just so glad that Jeremy could be here tonight. And um, I'm just stoked to be able to call both Nick and Jerome my brother in laws today. So uh, thank you so much for being here, Jerome. Tom? The, the oldest brother-in-law. Father's been at He's our MC here today. He's been usher. He's been a jump of trays. He's just had a kid. He's got three others running around. And he's still a great two MC duties. So that's, I, I think he deserves a different round of applause for that. So thank you, Tom. What we haven't seen is there's been a lot of behind the scenes work from the rest of the Nina family, Don, Gerard, Joseph, they all serve today, they all help with all sorts of different things. There's Maria, Sebastian and, and the rest of the Benedict, even Matthew, they've all, uh, they've all done some little thing to, and they just feel like family, so thank you so much to, to all of you and I'm just thrilled to be part of your family. Um, and, and, and to be really made for very well. Uh, thank you to Father Goldaddy and St. Vincent for having the, the wedding in the church. Sorry about all these thank yous, but they are very necessary. Um, the next thank yous are to Jane and, and Paul here at English Bar. They've, um, they've been the most wonderful people to work with. They put all of this together. They decorate the tables, um, they have lots of advice, um, and they've just they've been an absolute pleasure. So, Everything that you see here at this venue today was what they did, um, or a lot of work that, that they did. Um, and so, I think, thank you so much for allowing us to share this venue, and um, we're really glad to be here today. Um, the caterers, thank you for thank you for all the wonderful food, all the coordinators, um, Sebastian for being DJ, the musicians, the choir, the scholar. Um, but. I think there's, there's a few really special thank yous that, that need to come right at the end. Um, the first is to those who have travelled a long way to be here. I know Nicholas has travelled from Germany to be here. Um, there's people here from New Mexico, from New York, Chase, um, and, and from all over the, the country. Um, I had my two cousins, Philomena and Cecilia, come from all the way from Australia. And they've, they've been like little sisters to me, and it, it really means a lot that they can be here today. My, <coughs> my brother, my partner in crime, Luke, I think, we, uh, I think we've shared a room from the age of when he was zero till, I don't know, 25 years old. Or something like that. Um, <laughs> He's put up with a lot and we've had a lot of adventures together and I know that yeah he, he looks real efficient and classic. <laughs> <laughs> he and he behaves a lot better than I do at this point in time. Um, but uh, I'm so glad that he was able to make it. Um, we're, we're only 14 months apart and you can imagine we're, we're boarding school together, primary school 
together and we used to drag you back in the backyard every other day to play soccer or table tennis or a bunch of other things and he preferred drawing or something like that but he, he came out and he human being and, and he's just been the best brother probably could wish for so thanks for being here with me. Um, I'd, I'd next like to thank um, Mr and Mrs Nino who have really been parents away from home. It's a, I can tell you it's a, it's a difficult thing to pack your life up in a backpack and travel across the world <coughs> on a, not, I'd do it again if I had to, but um, it certainly makes it a lot easier to have parents away from home and, and I'm stoked to get a call you from that today. Um, <laughs> but I was a lot, um, and I've certainly probably got a bit more babysitting and, and help out in the house. I know that um, the Morris has remarked to me, and I think that I'd agree that uh, both Mr. and Mrs. Me and Abra are, you know, what you, almost what you consider the ideal father and the ideal mother. Um, they've really been really good role models for me to aspire to. Um, Mr. Lee and I will sit down with the kids and read to them every day, and he, he's, an, he's an extremely patient. Uh, he's an extremely patient man, and he, 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 he changes diapers and does all of those things. And um, I really look up to him and aspire to be more like him. And Mrs. Nina, I think she's three months pregnant, and the other day I came home and I left, and it was a disaster. And I came home and it was spotless, and she turned it around in a day. So. If that's not special, I don't know what is. So there's some, some serious duty of state um, completion going on there. Uh, and I'd next like to thank my, my parents. Um, I certainly wouldn't be standing here in front of you today if it wasn't for them. Um, a lot of people have put in a day, a week, maybe a month's worth of effort to get, to get here, but mum and dad have put in 27 years of sacrifice to get to, get to this point. Um, they, they did make a lot of sacrifices for me and sacrifices that I saw growing up and I got to appreciate more the older I got. Um, that was certainly been the best examples that I could have wished for. They really put their faith above everything else and growing up we might not have understood everything at the time but because of the sacrifices they made I really bought into everything that mum and dad taught us. And I guess that's part of the reason that Disappointed that no, I couldn't make it out today, but I completely understand why, and I think he made the right decision um, in staying at home in these uncertain times with COVID. But I'm also so, so grateful to Mum for having come out and made that sacrifice, even being away from Dad, to help and support us on this the most important day of our lives. And finally, there's an end. Um, <laughs> I wrote her a long letter, I can't remember much of the things I put in it because there's just too many words that I could use to describe and all its abilities. And uh, I think I think that um, I wrote her this poem but I had two stanzas that I, I sort of cut out of that because I thought maybe I would share those two stanzas with you um, as, a, as a closing to, to my speech. Um, um, but before I read those things, I also want to thank, uh, I also want to maybe remember those who couldn't be here with us today because there are a lot of friends, there's a lot of family that couldn't be here today. Uh, there's, there's also those who have passed away that can't be here today. A close friend of mine with Pat Gaynor um, and his mother, um, my granddad, and, and, and a lot of them are with us today and they're smiling and they're happy. And I, um, I know that we think of them and we pray to them and I think they've interceded for us to get to this point and it wouldn't be right not to remember them and their intercession from above. So here we go. Who could have known, who could have guessed, God would allow me to call the best. Words cannot describe her, nor what she means to me. She's the pearl of great price, my Anne-Marie. She accepted me totally flawed and unworthy. She has always loved me unconditionally. She is wonderful, beautiful, priceless, my Lord. Today I have her all mine to call. And so, my love, I can honestly say, here at the close of our wedding day, I have tried to love all that is beautiful and true in deep preparation for loving you.
I couldn't have put it any differently. <laughs> Actually, I could have. Uh, I just wanted to mention that that story was about the princess who married a dwarf. And now, you are a human being. So many people First he chased his high school friend's sister down, and then he asked his future brother-in-law, also the aforementioned high school friend, to be his best man. <laughs> I didn't meet Stefan until high school. <laughs> so the en the entirety of his childhood um, is unknown to me. However, I do know his younger brother Luke, <laughs> and have been in contact with him, and have gotten access to all the most hidden and long forgotten uh, details of Stefan's pretty old life. A younger brother never forgets. <laughs> and grandmas and uncles don't either. <laughs> Categorize this as early career interest, interests. Uh, when Stefan tried to save the tadpoles from his neighborhood park from drowning. <laughs> and he did this by scooping them out of the water and laying them on the shore. <laughs> and Grandma needed to tell him, Stefan, you're taking them out of the water and they're going to die. <laughs> Uncle Roman recounts of Stefan once being quite upset that he couldn't ride the roller coaster at the amusement park because he was too short. <laughs> Luke was taller, but too young. <laughs> Stefan was old enough, but too short. Some things you just don't get over. <laughs> Going into primary school, and eager not to let his height or tadpole be an obstacle to success, Stefan intended to focus his energy on something he could master, soccer. He used all his study time reading the rules and the of the game. From his actions during soccer matches, we are led to believe that the eight-year-old Stefan developed a strong sense of justice and rules during his time. On one occasion, when his uh, fellow players weren't following the rules, he decided to pick up the ball and walk off the field with it. <laughs> and uh, so they played follow the leader until Stefan, I guess, finally got his way. Upon graduating from primary school and being asked to complete a short review, Stefan confirms his most embarrassing moment was missing an open soccer goal in game. No, missing an open goal in the soccer game. And his biggest regret was not scoring more goals in soccer. <laughs> the engineer Stefan developed over time, it seems. Currently, he works on trains for a living. But in his free time, his engineering is often geared towards liquids. <laughs> Perhaps a less well-known engineering feat of his was accomplished with his brother Luke. In desperation to, ex to extract the newly purchased juice from the bottle without breaking the seal, carefully turning the lid to a point just before breaking point, and then squeezing the overturned bottle into a cup. The experiment was then completed by turning the lid back to its original position, and only considered successful if Mom didn't uh, notice the bottle of was empty. <laughs> Nowadays, he just opens the bottle like any normal person, <laughs> and contents himself on the path to becoming the world's nerdiest purpose then. As told by Luke, Stefan knows exactly how many milliseconds to roast the beans in the popcorn popcorn until the bean reaches the first crack, where the H2O in the bean becomes steam and creates pressure perforations in the literal brain bean structure, leading to an audible pie sound which heralds the bean's self-actualization path to becoming what is born or what it was born to be. A live roasted, caramel colored volume of the most precious ingestible substance man has yet discovered. <laughs> that is coffee. By the way, we'll be toasting tonight with coffee.
From our time in high school together, I got to know Stefan, and also Paul Zapp, who is also sitting here tonight, was with us in the same class. Um, so we got to know him as a stubborn, persistent, um, sometimes ingenuous, crazy character. His competitiveness made it so known on day one when he challenged all the older brothers to a ping pong tournament and won. <laughs> on another occasion, Stefan decided to lock all his fellow students out of the dorm building. For some reason, it was a surprise to him to find all his clothes in the shower the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan, I think it's safe to say that back then, neither of us would ever have imagined being related someday. <laughs> <laughs> or ever wished it. <laughs> But then again, who can pretend to predict what God has planned for us? I thought the good memory I had of you from when I beat you in our, arm, in our last arm wrestle in high school would live on forever. <laughs> yeah, here we are today. <laughs> and you're beautiful tonight. One very special person is missing tonight that would be very proud of you. Or maybe more, but it's one very, very special person. Um, you can thank her for having sent us uh, and dad, for having sent us boys to boarding school in Australia. <laughs> you found a bloke who's stubborn and persistent, but funny, honest, and loyal to him. Stefan, I can assure you, Anne is just as stubborn and persistent as you. <laughs> While your self proclamation, I'll never marry an American girl. We'll go to the grave today. Your daring and love for adventure will have to live on being married to Amy. <laughs> Both of you keep your sense of adventure together and your humor. Speaking from my uh, little experience, married life is an adventure and humor is very helpful. I did um, put out a request, at least uh, to Luke, um, to offer to any of relatives or friends to share uh, a message for Stefan tonight. Um, there was only one that cared too much. <laughs> that was uh, Tom DeGroot, close friend. And he says, uh, wishing both Stefan and Anne the very warmest congratulations on their special day. Apologies that I was unable to celebrate this joyous occasion alongside my dear friend, but I eagerly await your triumphant return to the land down under where we shall have belated festivities. Oh, and bring back a piece of cake for me. <laughs> so. And of course, uh, from my wife and little Patrick back home in Germany. All of us. Then I would uh, invite everyone to raise their cups of coffee. If they don't have any in their glass of champagne to uh, the new uh, bride and groom, and step on. All the best for your new married partner. Thank you,
Thank you. 
such a star for you I swear I'd steal them all tonight To make your every wish come true Your every dream for all your life But that's not how the story goes Softly bids good night, 
tucks us in our dreams so tight. Tomorrow seems so far away. When lost in the twilight. Da-dee-da-dee-da.